Hello, this is Paul Billington bringing you this week's Bible in the News. For the second time in my lifetime, Britain is to hold a referendum on European membership. On Thursday, June the 5th, 1975, the people of Britain were asked to vote yes or no to membership of what was then called the Common Market. Pamphlets were sent out to everyone by the government of Prime Minister Harold Wilson. The official government pamphlet read, Britain's New Deal in Europe. Her Majesty's Government have decided to recommend to the British people to vote for staying in the community. Now, over 40 years later, another referendum is to be held on Thursday the 23rd of June 2016, and the Government of David Cameron has sent out a pamphlet with the heading Why the Government Believes <coughs> That Voting to Remain in the European Union Is the Best Decision for the UK. But is it? Scaremongering and a project fear are being used in this fierce campaign and there is good reason for it. News media are telling us that at present opinion is more or less divided. The Remain In group are presented as having a slight edge, but with another month to go anything can happen. Britain's separation from Roman Catholic Europe goes all the way back to the time of King Henry VIII. At least, and even to Tyndale's translation of the Bible into English, and it was the influence of the English Bible that really brought about the original separation. But as things are, Britain has chosen the path of association with Catholic Europe. This must be expected to change. We do not know the details, but we are justified in anticipating uh, Britain's eventual isolation from Europe. At some stage, a breaking point will be reached, but the coming referendum in June is hardly likely to settle the issue. As Europe moves along the road to a Catholicised socialism, British business interests will be forced to seek trade and uh, friendship elsewhere. Uh, this will affect other English-speaking nations also. But on what basis is it claimed that Britain will separate from the EU? Is it simply this? It is simply this. The, she cannot be on both sides at the, uh, in the coming conflict foretold by the prophets, especially Ezekiel chapter 38. Either she must be on the, latter, uh, on the side of the latter-day northern power call, uh, allied with Russia and Catholic Europe, or she is to be identified with the southern group of Sheba, Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof. Verse 13. She cannot be on both sides at the same time. So which side will Britain be on? There is evidence to show that Britain is identified in prophecies that concern those who protest and oppose the aggressive northern power that comes to invade Israel. She cannot protest and oppose herself. She is therefore perforce not part of the European system when the Ezekiel prophecy is finally fulfilled. For this reason, writers over many years, some over a century ago, have seen Britain as being separated from Europe. The coming referendum is Britain's opportunity for an escape if she had faith enough to take it. But Britain's biblical culture has now been abandoned. So what, what can nations expect when they reject the word of God in the Bible and forget God? The principle is surely stated clearly through uh, enough by the psalmist when he writes, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Psalm 9 verse 17. Britain and the English speaking peoples are indictable on the following grounds. First, Rejecting the Bible as the word of the living God and replacing its teachings with humanism and theories such as evolution. Second, national immorality. Laws controlling wickedness have been abandoned, bringing sexual license, gambling, social perversion and crime. Third, 
the acceptance of Roman Catholicism as a respectable religious organization, overlooking its idolatry, results of clerical celibacy, and interference in the political process. 4. In Britain's case, transferring national sovereignty to Catholic Europe in the 1975 referendum, and thereby enslaving the country to her traditional enemy. And 5. Government attitudes towards Israel and the Jews have often been shameful, particularly since World War II in Britain's case. This must be accounted for. It is because Britain and other English-speaking nations have ignored the warnings of Scripture and the warnings of those who were enlightened by the Word and have foolishly allowed Roman Catholicism to infiltrate and weaken them, that defeat is going to come. As Delilah charmed Samson and deprived him of sight and strength, so the harlot of Rome is working to bring about the ruin of the English-speaking world. Britain is being bound and chained by her membership of the European Union and its laws and directives. Uh, when she wakes up to the realisation of her plight, her strength will be gone. Whatever the result of the coming referendum in June, in or out, Britain has serious trouble coming. As it was once put, trouble ahead for Tarshish. The God of heaven is just and righteous in all his ways. But what is to become of nations who have been exposed to the word of God, as Britain was, have been addressed through it, have even been moved by it to fulfill his great purposes, have also been delivered as in World War II, but then turned their backs upon God and despised the holy oracles? What is to become of nations, we ask, who refuse to hear the cry of the prophets, preferring science fiction and the myths of atheistic dreamers. Here's what the Almighty uh, says through the prophet uh, Jeremiah. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Chapter 18, verses 7 to 10. This infallible principle will apply to all of the independent English-speaking nations who each bear their own responsibility before God. They will be held especially responsible for the way in which they respond to Bible teaching and treat his people, the Jews. The principle has, was seen with ancient Tyre, who was addressed as follows. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. Ezekiel 28, verses 18 to 19. If these words are to find a secondary fulfilment, even partial, in the latter-day Tyre, in its Tarshish lands or isles, then we may be assured of a terrible and dreadful judgment that is to be poured out upon those who have hardened their hearts against God. The word through Ezekiel says, Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. What could this mean? Avril Manhattan was painting a picture, a scenario for the United States in his book, The Vatican-Moscow-Washington Alliance. He wrote, Fifty-five million Americans, many of them in positions of influence, could be a formidable minority if they supported uh, Catholic Marxism he means socialism. The vast network of the Catholic Church could provide a most efficient vehicle uh, of, of subversion uh, throughout the United States. 
such a network, buttressed by religious, including Islamic, social and cultural pressure groups, could inter inter interpenetrate the most sensitive and the most influential strata of American society. Should the Vatican strategy succeed, an even wider section of the United States Church will be gently nudged toward the gradual acceptance of a form of socialism, such as Obama has been employing. This, this would mean the creation of a revolutionary minority which would carry on their subversion against American democratic institutions disguised as a religious group exercising their rights under the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. To talk about Catholic Fifth Columnists sounds discriminatory. Yet, one generation ago, Catholic minorities helped to destroy democratic Europe. This they did by cooperating with Hitler. They helped Hitler because they were, fi they were fired with ideological zeal. The use of force in, giving situations is, uh, in given situations is endorsed in several theological works, both Catholic and non-Catholic. There, there has been the use of the term a just war, or as Professor Davis of Birmingham, UK, expressed it in his book Christians, Politics and Violent Revolution, published 1976 that was, Resort to force must be regarded as just if the cause is just. The struggle against Western capitalism would, be, would conceivably be regarded as just if the church, uh, 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 by the church and could be grounds for subversive activity from Catholic-inspired peace movements. In view of pseudo-Christian teaching, the potential for subversive activity in a time of crisis is very great if the church happened to think it suited its purpose. We hardly need to explain what this could mean if social anarchy and violence swept through the streets. Today we see Britain under its present political leadership becoming more enmeshed in its association with Europe. We are right to fear for the future and to urgently warn of the consequences that could follow. Such a course will not bring God's blessing upon, you, upon Britain. The closer Britain becomes tied to Europe now, the worse it will be for her when the time for separation comes. Europe may well insist upon Britain maintaining links she has agreed to, and we must not be surprised if this issue brings violence into the streets. Some leading political figures have already warned of such a possibility. And that would certainly bring about the situation described by Ezekiel, a fire from the midst of thee. We do not know, because we have not been told exactly what will happen in the coming referendum. The scripture principle is there for us to consider, and it provides a basis for warning those around us of what could happen. When subversive action and violence breaks out as a fire from the midst of thee, it will be too late then to hear the words of Christ, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Luke 24, verse 25. Join us again next week for another Bible in the News.